So once we start up Premiere, we've got all of the different panes that are available to us. I'm going to go through these one by one. One thing that I've added in here, which is typical the first time that you open up Premiere, is you'll often see the Learn panel. And there's lots of tutorials there and resources for you to help you learn through all the different aspects of Premiere. But for today, I'm generally just going to close that panel down. So I'm left with the basic four. These are the standard four panels that are part of the editing workspace in Premiere. Uh, to go through these one at a time and put a name on them, start off with we've got the project panel down here in the bottom left. We've then got the source panel. Then we've got the timeline. And then we've got the program window, which shows us our final edit. First things first, we have to actually get some media, some different media files, whether that's video files or audio files, and we need to have them at our beck and call whenever we need to use them. And that's what the project panel is for. So we need to get some media and drop it into this space here. There's two methods I'm going to talk about to actually get the files into that space. One is just to open your finder, find the file where all of your different video and audio files are, pick the files that you need, and just click and drag and drop onto that project pane. It will just take a second for them to load up and then all of the different media files are there. The second option, if uh, for different reasons that's not appropriate, you can go into the file menu and you can go down to import and that will open up a dialog box where you can navigate through all of the different folders that are available to you and you can draw in the different media files that way. The advantage of having your media files here in the project pane is that they are within your fingertips and uh, you can just move around. You can also quickly scan through the different video files by, by just moving your mouse over the thumbnails and that just scratches quickly through a preview of what's in those different video files because uh, with the normal type of video work you'll have lots of different shots that look very similar from their thumbnails but you might want to just quickly see which is which. Once we've got the video files and audio files in there we can then go through the actual source window. So the source window, that's what comes up when we double click on any of these different thumbnails. It pops that into this window, the source pane up here. I've got a scrub tool where I can quickly go through the shot. And this is with the view of marking an in and out point of this source file. So to mark an in point, I can just move this scrub tool over to the point where I want to mark in. So we'll say about there, this is the actual in item here. If I hover over it, it gives me a tooltip saying in. So I can start mark in. It also gives me the tooltip or the keyboard shortcut of I. So if I just press I on my keyboard, it will do the same thing. So we mark the in point and then we move over further on and we can judge where we want to mark the out point. And again, we can click on this icon here that says tooltip saying mark out, or O is the keyboard shortcut, which I'm going to do now. So I've just pressed O on my keyboard, and that just gives me the keyboard shortcut marking the out point. The reason that we mark an in and an out point in the source pane is so then we can move it down onto the actual timeline. And I'm going to do that by clicking and dragging and dropping on the timeline. That makes the timeline come alive. And we can see we've just got the little blocks of video with the accompanying audio alongside it. Timeline is split into two different halves. We've got video on the top and audio on the bottom. By default, we've got three different video layers and we've got three different audio layers. And that's for layering up the visuals and the audio as we'll see later on. You can actually pull directly from the project pane into the timeline. But the reason that we go through that whole process in the source window and marking the in and the out points is because it makes it much easier to edit the files in the timeline later on by using tools like the rolling or the ripple edit tool. So for instance, in this shot that I'm just after going into, uh, I've got a little bit of buffer before and after the piece of footage that I actually brought into the timeline. And so later on, if I decide I want a little bit more from the end, I can just use my ripple edit tool and I can move over here to the end of that block on the timeline and I can just click and drag it a little bit further. We can see how much we're taking in the program window. And when I'm happy with what I have, I can just let go. So that automatically takes from the buffer that I left behind in the source window. If I actually dragged directly from the project pane into the timeline and razored, used the razor tool to cut up the different uh, pieces of footage, 
I wouldn't be able to use the ripple edit tool like that. So that's why going through the source window is just better, more efficient, and just cuts down on the amount of work in a more complicated edit. As you can see in my timeline here, uh, the block that I've brought in here is maybe about five seconds long. And so it looks quite short or quite small on the timeline and can be hard to kind of get a handle on. Uh, I've got a horizontal scroll bar down here at the bottom and I can just click and drag either side of that to zoom in on the timeline and zoom out again for a more lengthy type of film or feature for half an hour, let's say, that will become essential, zooming in and zooming out. Uh, we can also hold down the Alt key and use the mouse wheel on my mouse and that will do the same job. So I've just added one particular shot there with the accompanying audio alongside it and it's a matter of going through that process again. So I will go through here on my project window again and uh, I will say I want that shot and I will mark an endpoint here by pressing I on my keyboard and I will judge it just when the actual eagle goes off screen there. I'll just give it a few seconds after that and then I'll mark the out point. So I'm going to drag that onto the actual timeline as well. And so again, we can see that we've got two shots, one after the other, and that's just a hard cut. So if I press play using the actual play button here or the space bar on my keyboard, we can see what the final edit is going to look like here in the program window. <laughs> So that's what I have so far. For effect, I'm going to go through that process in one or two more times and we'll just get about 30 seconds of footage. So I've added to the timeline there, again, just using that same process over and over again. And I've got about 30 seconds of footage and I've got five different distinct shots, all hard cut together, all lining up along the timeline. Let's just take a small little play again. So we're getting the audio there as well as the actual video shot, the accompanying audio that was recorded at the time of the video. Just to kind of highlight the different layers, I'm just going to show you the way that the different layers work just from the audio point of view. So I'm going to drag in two audio files into the project window. And these are pre-prepared. I have an audio folder here with two relevant audio files. I've got a backing track and I've got a narration file. I'm just going to select both of those again, drag and drop them onto the project window and that uh, we see them gone in there and I can bring those into the uh, source window again if I want to use and mark in and out point I can do that um, but with this it might be just a case of putting it in now uh, with audio it is a little bit more difficult in terms of dragging and dropping it if I drag and drop it it might not go where I want to go I'll probably need to use this overwrite or insert tools on my uh, uh, on the bottom of the source window. So I want to put this at the very beginning. I just need to make sure that if I'm just using this insert and overwrite tool at the bottom of the source window, that I select the audio track that I want to put it on. So I'm going to select audio track two because I want to keep the original audio as well. And I just want to layer this audio underneath. So I'm selecting this audio track and then putting the scrub tool at the beginning and I can just say overwrite whatever is there. Uh, and we are going to just line up that audio underneath the audio from the from the videos. I'll do the same type of idea here from uh, this backing track as well. If I know that I'm not going to be doing much uh, editing, marking in an in and out point, of course, with audio, yeah, I might want to use the whole backing track. I can actually just drag it straight on to this third layer as well. And so let's just try that. That's what it sounds like at the beginning. Let's just take a middle part here. So we've got three different pieces of audio playing there. The original audio from the Eagles at this scene, the narration that I added in on the second track, and then I've got this background music track as well. I will need to do some mixing with that to try and change the levels to make them more suitable, but for the moment, that's okay. Let me just tidy up. I just want 30 seconds of stuff here. I'm just going to use the razor tool to uh, get away from uh, or take these pieces away at the end. So I'm just left with 30 seconds. Again, this is a very, very rough draft just to get it through uh, the workflow to get a feel for how to work with it. So I've got my final edit here at the top. Let's say I'm very happy with that and I want to export it out for YouTube. So to export a piece of media out from Premiere, once the project is done, I can go to the file menu. Go to the export submenu, 
go to media that will open up a dialog box and there is a lot of different moving parts in this dialog box but the good news is is that there's a shortcut into how or where i want to set the settings for so for youtube generally youtube takes lots of different types of video formats but if it had to choose one to recommend it usually chooses h264 so i'm going to choose h264 from the format drop down and then the presets again the presets are bringing together of all sorts of different settings that are from all of these different panes but the settings that suit a particular destination uh, it's got lots of different options down here youtube if that's the destination of this video i want to go down to the youtube section here and probably if this has come from just normal smartphone footage smartphones generally they record in 1080p full hd and so we go youtube 1080p full hd i'm going to select that that brings in all of these settings that suit that destination or that platform for youtube i'm going to export video and audio everything else is the same the only last thing i might want to do is actually change the output name and it's also to change the destination if i want to save it in a particular folder i actually click and it brings it into a particular folder here so let me just type this in as american eagle uh, i'm happy with that folder where it is at the moment so i'm just going to click on save and i can export it and depending on how much editing that i've done if i've done a lot of editing and have a lot of different effects the actual rendering and encoding of that file can take quite a lot of time and i'm talking up to half an hour an hour maybe multiple hours as well depending if i'm doing a full-length documentary or feature so be patient now i'm checking in the folder that i put it in and that's it it's just completely exported that file out there it's like a normal .mp4 file that's ready to be clicked and dragged and dropped into youtube or i can just actually play it here either just double clicking on it will open it up in whatever your default video player is and that's the actual video that's playing there so that's a lightning tour through premiere uh, the workflow of all of the different panes and roughly how to do it uh, please subscribe if you found it useful talk to you soon bye